Hey everyone, Lisa from How to Zazzle. I know it's been a while since um, I made the video on showing you guys how to use the template on Zazzle. This is what I'm talking about. If you click on customize this, this design. A while ago I made a video on like what all this stuff is and what it means and what it helps you do. But since I made that, so many things have changed on Zazzle. So I thought I'd just quickly go through it all again. So what I'm going to show you what all these icons mean on the side, on the top, and on the right hand side. So first I'm going to upload this picture. And now I'm going to go through what everything means. So I'm going to start up here on the top. So undo is obvious. Click on that and it's going to undo your last action. And you can keep, keep clicking on it and it will undo, it will undo several actions. So let's re-add this picture. Redo is the same way. Like if you undo something, you can redo it. Forward and backwards right here is moving um, different elements. So say you put another picture on here or text or whatever, you can click backwards to make it move to the back or forward to make it move forward. And tiling. So like say you want a, something, a pattern to repeat. Okay, now I'm going to click on the image, go up to tiling, and then up here you can see, you know, what it does. You can play around with the different settings. So that's tiling. Next is aligning, so click here. You can move things around to the left, to the right, up and down. To the top, to the bottom. So guidelines, these show these are so important and I can't stress this enough. Do you see the green line that goes on? So these help you center things. So as long as it's inside this border, it's going to print for sure. This is this is especially important like when you're doing stickers and buttons. This is especially important on stickers. On the stickers, they use a cutting machine. So like your design is going to go a little bit outside of where they're going to cut the stickers. So like your design's probably going to look like it goes to the edge. But the sticker, this is along the lines that it's going to cut it. So make sure the design that you want to be seen is inside the green line. Like anything important should just be inside the green borders. And grid lines, they also just help you center things. It, it just puts a grid on there so you can center things easier. Grouping is for... moving everything at once it, it like locks all the layers together so say you wanted two pictures on here and you wanted to to center them together so what you could do is go here to layers hold down your shift button and click on each layer and once they're highlighted blue you can click on group and what this does is it allows you to move everything together in one piece. And then if, when you want to stop that, then you can ungroup it. You can also do the same thing by cli right clicking, clicking select all, putting your cursor over the picture, right clicking and pressing group. That will also allow you to group things. Then again, you can do the same thing, select all and ungroup. And then it will separate again. So now 
this button here is for masking. So how you do that is you could either upload your own shape or you can go here to elements and pick a shape. I'm going to shrink this down. Now I'm going to put this over the picture I want to mask, right? So now I'm going to go over here to layers. I'm going to hit shift and then I'm going to select the layer I want to mask and the shape. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click oval and the picture and then mask. And it's going to turn your picture into the shape. We can do that again because I know it's a little bit confusing. So here you got the lady. We're going to go to elements. We're going to click on square. Shrink it down a little. Put it over the part you want to mask. Now we're going to go to layers. Hold down the shift button. Click on the two layers. The shape and the one you want to mask. And then go up here and click mask. And it's going to mask it. And if you want to undo it, you just click undo. Okay, so now we're going to go down this side. So change image. That's easy. If you want to change out an image, you can just click on a different image and it will change it. Filters, you can turn your picture black and white. They have all kinds of sepia, all kinds of different colors in here, you know, that you can mess around with. So if you want to change a filter, you can up here. Crop, that's if you want to crop something, you can crop it. You just hold down the corners and Move it where you want and hit crop and it will crop it. Aspect ratio, it will change the shape. So fill and fit. These confuse a lot of people too. Fill will fill in this whole space. Whereas fit, we'll fit it top to bottom. So fill and fit. Scale is obvious. Rotate, you know, it just rotates your picture different ways. And if you have something that you want just a little bit rotated, you can go right here and just do it a little bit at a time. And then flip. This works out good. Like if you want to fill up a coffee cup, what I do is I copy the image, paste it back down, and then I hit flip. See, it kind of mirrors the image. So that's what you could use Flip for. And then down here, when you click on More Options, it says Remove White from Image. So you can click on Never, which is such a weird... Why don't they just say... I don't know, it sounds funny, never. But anyway, never is just not to do anything. Background only. If you click on background only, if you have like an image that isn't transparent now, 
you can make it transparent, which is cool. So you can remove just the background. See how it removed that white right there? So never and white remover. So also you go down here and you can click remove all white in the image. So if you remove all white, then it becomes see-through, see right where the cloud turned transparent. So that's what that's for. So make an object permanent. So if you make an object permanent and always visible, that's so that like the customer can't change it. I don't really use that one ever. I usually use this, make the template, make this a template object. If, if you click on make object a permanent object, then you can't do a template object. So I'm going to click off of that and I want to make this template, this a template. So once you make something a template, that means the customer can change out the picture. Let me remove this. Okay, I'm going to fill this and now I'm going to add text. Okay, so what happens is when you make this a template, the customer can now click, right? This button's going to show up, personalize this template, and they can change that text to whatever they want. So it just makes your product customizable for the customer. Okay, also up here where it says letter spacing, this is so that you can like move the letters apart. Right here where it says line spacing. This is to move the words apart or together. So like if those look too close or if those look too far apart you can go down here and you can move the words closer together or farther apart so that's what line spacing is so letter spacing is moving the letters apart line spacing is moving each level apart like to move the you know them farther or closer orientation that just makes the words go sideways. Like if you want to put a name down a coffee cup. Curvature. You can only do that on a single line. So let me remove this. So if you want the text to curve, you can move it this way. And just a little hint is it always looks better if it's all capitals. when you're using the curve. So let's change the font. So here you can change the, the curve. And if you can't get it, this one, this direction goes that way. If you want it to go down there. And if you can't get it exactly right using this, then you can go over here and you can just type in, you know, a number and change it a little bit at a time. We already went over this. This is just making it a template. Also, once you make something a template, if you want to, you can put in like edit text or on this top line, give customers directions. 
but I never do because if you accidentally, if you have more than one text to change and you put right in the same thing, if you put edit text on both of them, it's going to edit both of them. The text has to be different. So whatever you put in, make sure, like if you have, let me show you. So if you want to make this a template too. See here it's going to say two. So the top one is one and this one is two. It's always got to say something different. Otherwise, if it says the same thing for both of them, it'll change them both. Instead of one at a time. So that's it for that side. Let's go down. So over here, we all have seen me add text. We all know how to do that. Elements, I showed you two. Right here, there's a line, triangle. You can use these shapes. And you can change the color and stuff on them too. So say you put a square on here. Over here, you can choose the fill color and the border, and you can change the border's thickness. And you can make the fill color transparent. So that's the elements. Icons I don't use. This is more for people who are customers making something for themselves. You can't use their icons and then sell what you're making. So this really isn't important to sellers, only to customers making something they're going to buy for themselves. The background, that just changes the background, you know, of your product. So down here, it says backgrounds. Don't use these either unless you're just making something for yourself. You can't put one of Zazzle's backgrounds on your product and then sell it. It's only for customers making something for themselves. In files, this is where you go to find all your pictures that you have uploaded. And product, this gives you all the details on the product that you're making. So if you're curious, you know, about the details of your product, you can go here and read you know, all the details of your product. Tells you where it's made, the size of everything. Down here, layers, is everything you're working on. So it has the text layer. You just click on the layer you want to work on and then you can do whatever you want to do with that layer. Also, you can make a layer invisible by clicking on this little eye. And then this is just the background color. And then you can go down here to help. And right here, it's going to show you a couple things. Here's all the shortcuts, like for cut, copy, and everything. It, it tells you which keys to hold down to do those shortcuts. Guidelines, this is important. I think everybody should read this. Again, I talked about it a little bit, but it's what I talked about with the green border. It explains it. Safe content area. Keep your important content inside the dotted line. The green line itself will not print. So keep anything you, anything out of the design you want to show should be inside the green border. The finished print area, we will attempt to print the entire area with this line. The blue line itself will not print. So, like if you're doing an invitation, you want to go to the red line. Because if you don't go to the red line, there's going to be a weird white border around your design. So, the guaranteed area to be printed is a green line. But like if you're doing something, you want to go all the way to the end of the product, make sure you hit fill and go all the way to the red line. The red line says bleed area. Fill background content to this line to ensure you don't have unprinted edges. The red line itself will not print. Again, if you don't go all the way to the red line, there might be, like for the coffee cup, it wouldn't really matter, but for like an invitation, you don't want like a weird white border around the outside of your invitation. 
and then it just gives you examples of what they mean down here so everybody should like here's an example of the invitation if you don't go all the way to the edges it's going to have this weird white line around it so go ahead and you know go through that and you can look at those pictures so that's it so i hope this is helpful to you guys um oh also if you want to see a preview of your design while you're working on it you can click down there and you know see what you're working on so that's it i hope that's helpful if you have any questions post them below